Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the R27 series of missiles. Now it might seem like kind of a niche topic, but as you're probably well aware, uh, this has uh, been something that has come up a little bit lately because of a certain DCS launch, and you know, I'll be honest, it's just kind of an interesting weapon, and it kind of almost bucks the trend of some other uh, Eastern uh, slash Russian slash Soviet weapons of the era. So let's uh, go ahead and get started here. So we have ourselves, of course, the Sukhoi 27 here. I'll go ahead and pause so I can keep getting all these uh, lovely contacts here. And I've modified this one quite a bit. Uh, you can see here that it has the AA-10, which again, the R-27 to me, the AA-10, 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 AA-10. And you'll notice there's five different variations of this weapon. Now this weapon is kind of an interesting weapon. You know, when you first take a look at it and kind of get a little hint, is the Ilya 470-1. You'll probably say, this thing looks a little weird. It looks kind of like it's got an oversized head, these big control fins. And then if you look a little more closely, you probably start to recognize the fact that this is actually designed to be a modular weapon. Yes, a modular weapon. And uh, the reason I say that's kind of fun is because a lot of Soviet designs were always really, really, really good at that one thing that they did. And sometimes you had alternate versions. Let me give you a case in point. Name the American torpedo. Uh, you're sitting there going, um, uh, there's, there's, uh, 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 the Mark 48. Correct. Name other American torpedoes. And you start to go, oh. Now, meanwhile, I say, name a Soviet slash Eastern torpedo, and all of a sudden you panic a little bit when you realize there's like 30 different kinds. That's just because philosophically over on the Eastern side of things, so whenever you had engineers, uh, they tended to get really, 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 really good at that thing, and they kept getting promoted for that one thing they were really good at. Whereas Western designs tended to be more generic, so uh, basically simplify logistics. That all aside. This weapon basically consists of one body, which is a very, very, very large warhead for its size. And again, if I come down here real quick, you'll see that it is a 39 kilogram warhead. That's a gigantic warhead. And uh, the reason I love that is because there's like nothing like it. Uh, let me show you what I mean here. Let's grab an AM7M here, which is a classic. Again, when people look at this weapon, they say, aha, there's the R27. It's not the same thing. Trust me. And you'll see why in a minute. But if I go down here, you'll notice it's a 16 kilogram warhead. You're like, oh, what about the AM120? The AM120, you say, well, the AM120, believe it or not, is also a tiny warhead. And if I scroll down here, you'll see that this one is a 7.7 kilogram warhead. These are tiny, tiny little warheads compared to our R27. Now, the cool thing here is the R27's main warhead is basically stored kind of in the middle there. And meanwhile, the end and the front are interchangeable. We can pop the front out and put on a radar seeker. We can pop the front out and put on an infrared seeker. And there's one really, really fun one, which is, get this, this is an anti-radar seeker. However, it's an air-to-air anti-radar seeker. We'll show you that in a minute. Of course, the other thing you could do is you could pop the butt off of this thing, and you could throw on what they call the extended range module. You can see how much bigger the booster is on this one. Or you can leave it as kind of the short one. Unfortunately, let me get you a picture of the short one. And you could see the difference in size immediately. So what does this mean for us? Uh, this means a lot, actually. Uh, this means that we have a wide variety of different kind of combos in order to be effective in combat. Now, the R model and the T model, kind of the OG sort of a short range a sort of thing like that, is pretty short range. It's, um, if I go up to the tippy top here, it says up to 32 nautical miles. Now you're sitting there going, what does 32 mile nautical miles really look like? Well, if you take a look at my Sukhoi 27P here, if I hold my mouse about here, that's the range. And you're sitting there going, oh, okay, so that's, that's not awful. That's, that's like a sparrow. It is like a sparrow. But uh, the big difference here, and this is one of the fun things that makes it a little different than the sparrow, is when they were launched, they were typically launched with a thermal version as well as a radar guided version. The concept is if you could get one to work, uh, then you wouldn't have to worry so much about the other. You'll see what I mean. So we have two targets coming at us. Uh, we have one that's a little difficult to identify. Uh, we have one that's very easy to identify. It's got a fire control radar, air to air, medium range. Obviously, this is a fighter sized target. Something over here, clearly a bomber sized target. And again, we knew that just from what distance we picked it up. And we're actually detecting its radar right now. Now we've closed a distance of about 30 miles. So this is the absolute max range of our good friends, the R27, the standard versions, the standard range model, not the E models, I would call it. Now let's go ahead and uh, kind of show you a typical engagement engagement uh, with this particular weapon. Now, we're a little too far to be able to hit this one. This one's just going to maneuver. We're never, never, never going to hit it. So I'm going to get a little bit closer here. We'll get a little bit closer. That's about 21. Pause. Now, watch one of the fun tricks people didn't realize. I'm going to press Shift F1, hold down Shift, drag a box around these two, and I'm going to go ahead and fire at these. So the first one I am, I'm going to go ahead and fire one R and one T to the bogey number one, and I'm going to fire one R and one T for bomber number one. 
Now, this is one of the fun things you might not have known about a Sequoia 27, is they have TWS. Not only do they have TWS, but if you look here, you'll actually see that I can fire off four missiles. Each one of these missiles, of course, uh, packs uh, both two different kinds of warheads here. One's the thermal and one is the radar. Now, let me zoom in a little bit and show you something weird going on here. You will notice my thermal missile has no lock right now. It is actually flying completely dumb. It's actually flying in a straight line. And what happens here is as our target turns and lights up, you will see that the thermal model of our weapon here, the R27T, will actually see the flight, the trail of this actually start chasing after it. This is a completely dumb missile otherwise, and that's kind of interesting. Now, you'll notice our radar models, they don't care. Now, if you actually look carefully here, you'll see that our T model... Yeah, oh, that one hit, and it blasted that B-52 out of the air. Uh, meanwhile, this guy on the run here is running really, 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 really fast. So if um, we're going to do anything here, we have to actually catch up to him. Now, you're probably sitting there going, okay, that, that's kind of neat. Uh, wh what else can you tell me? Uh, what else I can tell you? I can tell you a lot. Uh, namely, for example, this thing is very dangerous. So I'm actually going to grab this guy in order him to turn, because we have something very, very dangerous that can make our day here. And that happens to be a phantom. Now, the Phantom, of course, packs its own radar missile, and this is the aforementioned Sparrow, which actually has a pretty good range on it. But because we also have the ER version, we can basically engage this Phantom with impunity. The trick here is whenever you're dealing with air-to-air -air weapons that are not going to be the active radar version like AIM-54s or AMRAMs, the trick here is to basically get the other guy to turn around. Because if you can get the other guy to turn around, especially if you get them to turn around after they've already fired, you win the engagement because they're going to basically put their tail to you and you get a free shot on them, as you'll see. Now, the problem is we have to know the range of this particular aircraft's weaponry. So if I actually were to click on my Phantom here, you will see I'm completely within range of my Sparrow here. It's got about a 38 mile range. So if I wait to 20 miles, we're basically both going to get a free shot on each other. So it actually creates kind of an interesting little, um, I, I don't want to call it like a standoff, but uh, you'll kind of see what I mean. So what I'm going to do is hold off just a few more seconds here. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to go ahead and fire one of these long range versions. I'm not going to fire the ET version. I'm going to fire the ER version. Now, here's a fun fact. You see the P version here? This will actually home in on the radar emissions of the Phantom. The problem is the Phantom is going to get a shot off and that's going to put us in a really bad spot. But if we wanted to be kind of have some fun with him, we could actually fire this weapon off. He would keep following us to guide his sparrow in and he'd get hit in the face with it. At least we hope. But then, of course, we're giving us our, our tail and the other, the other way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fire one ER model at him. Like I said, if we wanted to be a little cheeky, we could use that strategy of basically firing it. So what you'll notice here is he has already fired on us. So I waited a little too long, but that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the heck out of here. And remember... He fired an ER at us. If he fires an ER at us... Oh, see how he's turning? See how he's turning? So this fight is over for him. Do you notice um, as soon as we launched on him, he basically uh, panicked and uh, went around. Uh, you can start evading anytime you like here. Anytime. There it goes. Do you see how as soon as we fired on him, he retreated? So what we're going to do now is kick this thing up to afterburner, and we're just going to basically track him straight down. So that actually worked exactly as I intended for it to work. Now, the scary thing here is this ER version probably not going to catch up to the Phantom in time. Whenever you do any tail chase with any weapon, it has a tough time. You can actually see them Alamo, my anti-radar missile version. It's just sort of putzing along there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and get a little bit closer because, again, we have a tail chase here right there. And this will be a perfect opportunity to fire one of the ET models. The ET is not extraterrestrial. It is a thermal launched weapon. Now, the scary thing is this weapon right now actually has a really, really good motor on it because it's so much bigger, as I showed you in the picture there. So this thing has already stepped itself up to about Mach 4, and our poor Phantom actually doesn't know we've launched on him. So what happens a lot of times here is they will actually turn on you, not realizing that uh, they're being hunted down. But, oh, it's not going to happen. Yep, he's, he saw it. He saw the weapon. But again, all we're trying to do right now is close up on him and try to get him to turn. Come on. You're going to turn. See how he's just running, 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 right? There it is. There's the turn. So we're going to come this way, and we're just going to get ready to fire another ET on him. Remember, the ETs, of course, are running halfway down enemy territory here. And right there, that's going to be the shot. See, now he's got us nice and square. Let's go ahead and fire that ET. We could even fire an ER if we were being nervous here. Off it goes. And again, notice the ET. It has to go to behind the target before it goes. Notice the ER has no challenge. And also notice our Phantom because he can't turn to point at us long enough to get a shot, is basically uh, right in our kill zone here. 
You know, again, I don't think this is going to go so well for the Phantom here. Hey, surprise. Oh, got him. Nice. All right, let's go ahead and reload our scenario here. And now you can kind of see tactically why. It is an incredibly good weapon because it has that longer reach. You can get the other guy to turn and basically get that cheap shot. But one of the things I want to share with you real quick, because I just get a kick out of this, is that version I was mentioning a minute ago, the R27P. That's the E model, basically. This is the one that homes in on radar transmissions. It's a really funny weapon to shoot because if they don't know they've been launched on and they leave their radar on, it basically will get them shot right in the face. It's kind of fun. Now, this is not a anti-radar missile in the sense that if you probably noticed down here, there's a boat looking up at us. You can't fire this weapon at a surface target. It just does not work that way. Uh, that's just kind of one of the fun little kind of catches. But anything else is totally acceptable. So again, we have these two targets. He has a surface search radar. This is an F-16 drone. I don't feel bad about shooting the drones up. It's just a drone. But if I were to take my um, regular P model here, lock onto this fellow here, again, we can technically fire either of these. If I fire this one, he's a little out of reach to hit the F-16. And uh, this is going to be kind of fun to watch, because if you notice, the F-16 turns immediately. This weapon is homing in on the radar emissions of the bomber. Oh, it's not going to go well. <laughs> As you can see, it didn't go so well. And I had a feeling it wasn't going to go so well. Bam. Now we got him. So now, of course, we can turn on our F-16, and we can go ahead now. We're actually close enough to fire the R, and we'll hit him with an R and a T, just in case. There we go. One of those, and one of those. F-16 is not going to have a lot of time to react here. There it goes. There's the turn. And you're up too high, though. He's up too high. Notice the T model again is doing that inefficient chase. And we got a turn, of course. We still have the Phantom we have to deal with. And we're already launched on, so the best thing we can do is immediately fire one of our own which we've done. And all he has to do is notice he's been fired on. Watch how tight this is going to be. Watch this. Watch this. See how the missile overshot us? Oh, 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 it's oh! <laughs> and as you can see, you got to make sure you pay attention in combat. Otherwise, uh, that kind of thing will happen. We were too close. Uh, we needed to take advantage of that extra five mile range there to be able to get that cheap shot, as you saw in that previous scenario. Now, if we open the scenario one more time, we'll show you kind of the other thing that could happen. So let's go ahead and uh, speed up time. And again, air-to-air -air combat is actually quite boring uh, once you get to uh, modern weapons. Because, like, this fight's over as soon as somebody launches uh, with modern weapons. But for now, it's pretty traditional. I'm going to ignore those two planes for a second here. I just want that one. That's the one I want. All right. So we're going to do the same thing we did before, but we're going to take advantage of that really long reach we have here. Notice I can fire this thing at any time. The probability of that weapon actually hitting that target is so low, but he doesn't necessarily know I fired on him, so. Wow, a little bit of an overachiever here. There he goes, he turned. Afterburner. Notice I didn't tell him to do anything, he just slapped all those other aircraft down. So our F-4, believe it or not, uh, knows there's a missile behind him, but the only reason he knows there's a missile behind him is because there's actually a radar site on the ground tracking me right now. If that wasn't there, he would not have known there's basically this insanely long-range shot taken on him. Nope, you're fine. Keep going. Keep going. Keep the afterburner going. By the way, do not climb with this aircraft. Um, if I try to climb up to 45,000, the altitude difference between myself and the target that I'm basically running down right now would be too low. Now, there's one thing I am curious about, a little bonus, I guess I'm going to call it. I'll shut the radar off for a second here. Do you notice that I can still see this target? No problem. The reason I can still see the target, and you see I'm starting to lose them, yeah, is because I'm using my thermal sight. Ha 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 ha! Oh, 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 oh! No. No, 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 no. If you're going to get this guy, you're going to have to get a lot closer, and you're going to have to stop wasting them. Oh, boy, this is going to end up being a gun kill here. There goes the next one. I really appreciate it if you don't keep firing those, but you know what? You do you. <laughs> Just like that. So as you can see, the R-27 is kind of a unique weapon. There's a lot of different platforms that can carry it. Uh, it's widely exported. The short-range versions are actually still pretty useful, and the long-range versions really, really, really give you a lot of tactical flexibility if you don't mind flying, uh, was that, 90 miles across Sri Lanka for the purposes of chasing the target down. Enjoy.